Hey guys, and welcome back to Crash Mind Over Mutant. So, at the end of the last episode, I got really annoyed because they just they flat out make fun of you for doing all of that backtracking that they forced you to do. And I'm really, really not happy about that. So, they knew. They knew that it was stupid design, and they've pointed that out multiple times. And then they have the nerve to flat out make fun of you and insult you for doing it. So that's done. We've still got one more bit of backtracking to do. Which will be at the end of the part and yes I'm fast forwarding that. But otherwise the backtracking is for the most part done. All of the major bits. So our objective now is we need to recover Uka Uka's bones. So in, in Uka Uka's redesign, he's got these small little bones that sort of dangle on bits of string underneath him. I mean, the original Uka Uka did have bones, it was just sort of like on the side of his head. His head. His head also being his body and his legs and his arms and everything. But anyway, he had some bones that were attached to the sides. Take that back, there's... So it's, it's not wrong to question why he suddenly has bones now. It's just now I think he has more bones. But apparently the bones are what contain all the, rest, all the rest of his magic, but they have been sold to certain mutants. And they're nothing special, they're just reskins of some of the mutants that we've been seeing throughout the game. And this was a dumb idea. I can clearly see that this guy cannot move this chest. And yet, I did it anyway. For some reason, I'm going to you back here. So, goodbye, Yuxopus. I don't think we'll ever see you again. Yeah, this is why these guys can be surprisingly annoying. Yes, you do have an injury, yes. Right. I got this jump just, unfortunately. <laughs> Messed up that one. Alright, round three. And this is the final round, I can assure you. I get it this time. So ignoring these guys this time around. Let's go down here to what will kill me and crash to insanity. And actually make these jumps. And there we go. Honestly, the best thing about this power-up is the fact that it just makes crash faster. That's exactly what this is for. So you're not going to be using this for combat in any way. This is this is here entirely for the purpose of just getting you through there faster. All right, meet the stench. What do you get if you cross a crow? I think with a skunk, you get one of these guys. I think with guns. It's not really a power up. It's just them firing the gun. Unless the suit and the gun is a part of their biology, I don't know. In Crash, in Crash of the Titans, these guys, they still had the skunk eagle design, but their body shape was quite similar to the snipes. That's why for a while I thought that they were just a reskin. But they've been given a... Among all, all of the Titans received major to minor redesigns, and I'd say this was the biggest one. Sadly, they're also not really any different to the snipes. I have no idea what that was. So you, they, you fire their attacks in exactly the same way. They don't have any sort of rapid fire attack. Really. So if anything, I'd say they're inferior. But they have that, which is kind of similar to, Ding to um, one of the attacks that Dingo Dial can do in his fight crash and sound. It's quite similar, only easier to avoid because it isn't suddenly changing direction. Never use the tail, which I think would make sense being a skunk, but they never use the tail. Why do I keep selecting that? <laughs> and that's it. I'm sure there's something they can do by pressing the Z button, but I don't think I ever need to do that this time. But I think it's what I was doing right there. Yeah, I think that's the attack you do with the Z button. 
<laughs> okay, so this is where we get a little bit non-linear. You can do this in whichever order you want. You're trans... You're trans... You, uh, you step on the transporter. And it will take you to a certain part of the island. I'm assuming this is here all the time now. For some reason, that teleported me a long way away from the transporter. I guess that's where the nearest ladder was. Wait, I think these guys explode, but if they do, they take a very long time. And once again, they kind of say the same thing as these little football guys, and they never shut up. For a long time, because they were off, they often accompany stenches, and I thought it was actually the stench talking. And I'm like, huh, that's a weird thing to add to their design. Is it obvious which... Crash, there wasn't even anything there. Is it obvious which one of these is my favourite Titan? So yeah, like I said, the backtracking isn't entirely done. We've got quite a big one at the end of the park, but otherwise, this is it. Very, really, this isn't much. Because we're about to go off in a different direction. So let's head over to that bit of 2D artwork off in the background there. That's it looks like the background to some sort of stage. It's like the actors will be stood next to it, and then. In the next scene will be inside it. As I think, because exactly what's going to happen. So these, I guess, Bone Guardian. Ooh, that sounds wrong, but uh, the characters that we're get the, these mutants that we're going after, they're not really anything special. I mean, it's kind of disappointing when you think you get like three, at least three mini bosses, but you don't. If there's anything you're going to be encountering quite a bit of, it's going to be the the, uh, the Grimleys. Which is fine by me, because the Grimleys are the best mutants in the game. I don't know why I'm doing this, because I can just go right through the door. What this is doing is losing me health. Why can't I attack them while that's happening? I don't get it. So when if they're blocking, okay. When they're in the middle of attacking, it doesn't make any sense why I can't attack. Them. Anyway, that was a waste of time. I got slow versus rapid punches. Here. It seems like an unfair fight. Luckily, when you stand here, the other side doesn't do anything. Actually, neither do my attacks for the most part. But he's right there at point blank range. Nothing's happening. I'm better off just getting off of it and just attacking it as crash. You're a useless snipe. You're useless. You're much better. Fortunately, they're way more effective when they're still when you're uh, not in control of them. Again, that's not a block. They're just attacking. I, I'm not invincible when I try and do that attack, so why are they? I hate when games do that. Like you, the enemy can do something, but you can't when you take control of it. Anyway, this part's quite tight. You've got to slow down time to avoid the boulders, but as you can see, you're not really given a very large amount of time. This is where I lost. Nearly all of my health. You've also got a snipe that's hacking you on the other side. It's a really stupidly placed snipe. The thing is, when you when you fall down a bottomless pit, it doesn't really count as you dying, so you don't regain your health. So uh, when I got hurt here, this did count as me dying. And down I go. Oh, look how close he was, anyway. <laughs> okay, let's try it again with more success. That was not more success. 
There we go. It's like they suffer from no knockback whatsoever, it's even better. Alright, your best option really is to just avoid the snipes. Wait for them to block where they can't do anything. And unless you're up here, you can't attack you anymore. Gotta be fast. And I really shouldn't be standing here because that snipe does rapid fire. Luckily, I think he technically does have his own version of that purple meter, so he can't rapid fire immediately again. There he goes that. They're easier to take out with crack. Head back over here so you have all the time you need. Unfortunately, I don't think the purple fruit works if you're even if you have a uh, Titan in storage, it doesn't actually fill up the meter. Let's wait for the right time and then go. Yeah, quite a tight one that one. Alright, our first of these three of the most fearsome mutants there are. He's a kind of grimly wearing massive gauntlets and I can tell you that means absolutely nothing because although he looks like a mini boss, he is actually absolutely no different to any other grimly we've encountered. He's no stronger, he doesn't withstand any more hits. And I don't think he's any different when you actually take control of him yourself. I'm not doing. I'm not doing anything differently here. There's nothing special about it. And that applies to all three of them. The one slowing down time actually helped. There is something very satisfying, even just watching, it, let alone playing. It. Unfortunately. This swell is really stupid. At the same time, down I go. <laughs> and now they've all respawned again. So we're going to cut there. Uh, it's, it's, actually, that's a different version. No, that's the crash dance. I think it's in Hulk in four, though. So that's our first Uka Uka bone. Ew. And. Now it's going to automatically teleport us back. Yeah, now we're doing that. Imagine how long this game would be if we were to going back and forth everywhere. The game would never end. So now we're heading off to the wasteland, or the desert as I've been calling it. Once again I went the wrong way. Because I couldn't remember where the roller village was. So, yeah, ten minutes later. And I wish I was making that up. But unfortunately I'm not. This really is 10 minutes later. So we want to go through here. And I don't know why I ditched the roller. That was a dumb idea. But luckily one always spawns in here. Thank you. I don't know why but he does. This is kind of a similar problem to what you found it to what I found in the junkyard. I'm not interested in destroying all of your crates. Yeah, the main problem I had here was that I, I encountered it was the same issue that I had with the junkyard. So at first I think I did go the right way. It's just that once again you need to talk to one of the characters in order for it to let you progress and that's the main problem that's not bothering with going after that snipe I've fallen down this wall enough times to know that I can't just jump down how is he doing that? he's floating in midair There would be a speed up power up, but I collected it the first time I was here. 
So yeah, you gotta talk to, I think, I think it's the, just the adult one. I don't know if talking to the young one does anything, but talk to the adult one. And then he'll, or she'll, tell you that one of their cousins is being kidnapped. So now the game will tell us where we need to go. It's a good thing that the, uh, the mutated rollers are harmless to the non-mutated ones. I think if they, you know, this is still called Roller Village. They don't look like they're built to roll. Like, they don't look like they have any uh, of the armadillo stuff with them. Bit difficult to get through the door, and what is annoying there is falling down here. So I can't get. I've got to go back now. Unfortunately, it took me a while to work that out. So for a bit, we're just going to be taking out snipes. Come on. There's a lot of snipes in here. And I think they do respawn in certain areas. So look, the, the, the target thing is clearly on, and yet for some reason I'm only sometimes hitting it. Now I'm aiming in the wrong direction. Alright, at the very least, his attack didn't do anything either. As annoying as it is that they didn't, that the mine didn't connect, at least neither did this. I just find it odd how you enter a new area and yet the timer for the minigame is still going. And the music is still going. Well, I did not second one hit it. Why do they change colour and lose like the uh, the purple smoke and everything when you take control? Access denied, we gotta take the upper path. Luckily these did hit. And now we can move on. Well once I'm done trying to break these crates. Cause I need well I want all the mojo I can. Except for that one. Or those two. Or those two. There's really no point in collecting mojo now. Because the problem is, you leveling up crashes all in good, but you're on a Titan for the most part. And the Titans are largely region specific. So if you want to upgrade all the Titans, you're basically going to have to do it, well, you, you can't really do it just by playing the game normally. Why you would want to upgrade everything is beyond me. <laughs> the backtracking is already bad enough. Ow. Okay, that was clearly my fault, I just stood there like a dumbass. Alright, here we go. Our next major titan, as you guessed before, is of course a, a snipe. And just like our Grimly, he isn't really any different to a regular snipe. My biggest problem here is bottomless pits. Yeah, he looks different. That's all he's got. He's not even got the cliche video game trope of it's the same enemy, just a different colour. But like, it's a it's a more powerful version identified by the player, like most enemies tend to, like other games do. No, he's. It's the exact same thing, just a different colour. No buffs or anything. And there we go. I don't know why it feels the need to show this every single time. That seems backwards to me. Hero defeated. I'm the hero. What's it talking about? This isn't a hero, it's a villain. Why is it hero defeated? And I don't know where that door goes, but we're not going to find out. So now we have our second bow, and it's time that we head off to the ice area. So 
So where are we going? Well, remember that giant thing that we found frozen in the wall at like the end of part two or whatever it was? It's time to finally see what all that was about. Fortunately, we've got a bit of a ways to go before we can get there. Yeah. I don't think there was really any chance of getting these guys up there. It's like he, I think they probably would be glad that Crash is no longer on his back, even though they die immediately after him. Right. I hate Magmadons, we're not having a Magmadon. Oh, these guys will never shut up. He's not gone, he's just up there. I don't know how they're seeing me, they got no eyes, they're just hands. A snipe is really not the best enemy for this. Especially these guys. Look, point blank range, I'm still struggling to hit them. And I can't hurt these guys. So, this part makes no sense. Even though the snipe is perfectly capable of shooting projectiles, I, as I realised, I accidentally found out what I had to do there. I have to do it similar to the Nina fight, knock the projectiles back at them. Even though the snipe is a range attacker throwing projectiles, it does not harm these guys. I don't know why, I think they just give you the option to do either, but no. Grimly's good. I guess I have another one of these guys. Actually, there we go. See that ghost freak. Oh, I should have lost. I should have ditched the snipe. There we go. Now that's more like. Unfortunately, we're back here again, on these very glitchy ice walls. I don't know what it is about these ones in particular, they're just quite glitchy. Now, the wind, the wind I get, the wind makes sense, that's going to cause you some problems. But firstly, what goes on here, because when I get to the end, I can't jump out. What's holding me back? Why can't I jump out to try and awkwardly make my way around the side? So yeah, there's wind, and that's what blew me off the side there. Okay, I get that. And I did edit out most of this. But there's a few problems here. Firstly, you can't really tell if you've jumped or not, because I, I can see it then, but there are times where it looks like I've jumped, and then it turns out I haven't. Like, the controls just become unresponsive. And there are times where Crash just doesn't grab a hold of the wall, times where he just randomly lets go. I don't know why it does all of that. Like that. Like, I was pressing the button there and nothing was happening. So yeah, after many failed attempts, one of them was admittedly my fault. I jumped right into the falling uh, icicle. And now we can actually go this way. Kind of reminds me of the um, scene in Ice Age where they're going to the ice cave. <laughs> Like Sid is terrified by all the things he finds frozen. For so long since I watched the film, I don't remember what he was. What you found? I remember one was a UFO, one was a dinosaur. There were like a few slots. But uh, I don't know. I can't really remember. It's a shame because that the slide section that follows is the best part of Ice Age. Oh, Ice Age, how you went downhill. So fast, too. The first film was pretty good. The second one's not as good, but it's alright. I actually really like the third one. I don't know, maybe it's just because it has dinosaurs, and that's all you ever need, usually. Even though the film is pretty much just Journey to the Center of the Earth with Ice Age characters. I enjoyed... I liked the fourth one. 
Ice Age Collision Course. I, I enjoyed that one, but I hated the thing. I want to see the baby again. I was like, whatever happened to the baby? We never saw humans again after the first film. Did you just say Merry Christmas? Alright, our final nuisance is a Magmadon. A Viking Magmadon. The problem here is you've got this boiling water, so that makes combat here a bit tricky because I believe they, uh, yeah, these guys are always moving forward when they're punching. And the, the, the health drains really fast. What I should be doing is trying to take control of one of them. Unfortunately, it's a Magmadon. See, that first attack did so, mu so much damage, and yet the second one did nothing. There we go. Luckily, his um, stomping attack also didn't do anything. Why does he look like Hades in God of War? Oh. Whoa, what the hell? <laughs> Text is overlapping. That's all of them, Crash. Time to go back and see my brother. Now, what we could do is teleport you straight back to where Uka Uka is. We're pretty good with the teleportation now. No. We're going to make you do one more bit of backtracking since we blocked off the way back up there. Although I think it would make that much difference. We're going to make you go all the way through the mountain again. Yeah, we're going to go through all of the traps, all the moments where I have to slow down time and be very unsuccessful with it like I was there. All the moments where I have to go along and go across these platforms. Uh, it, was getting, it was getting better. Now we're going to make you do it one more time. We couldn't just teleport you to Uku Uku, that would be too easy. Well, when you listen to this with headphones on, it sounds really weird. <laughs> yeah. I could not care about breaking everything anymore. To this foggy section. This foggy section that gave me no trouble last time, and here I kept falling down. So I just decided to do it on foot. Went in a different direction this time. You can go either way. They both work. Got me a crash doll there. I don't even know we're getting all the crash dolls done. I guess they just unlock things. Okay. Take out all of these guys, a little enemy gauntlet, and that's it. One thing that was changed since that wasn't there last time. Yeah, first try that time. And there we go. And there's not even a cutscene or anything. Just got to uh, do this. And then Aku Aku will tell you to just go straight to one behind. We're not even given any information, it's just Uka Uka somehow used his power. Didn't you have just given us that before? The so Uka Uka has reactivated the head of the Doominator from, that we saw in Crash of the Titans. That's now been resting there. So now we can head back, to, just straight back to Wombat Island, no problem. Get inside so we can get this is where we encounter Crunch. I don't know why I said I was. I don't know why I was questioning why Crunch wasn't here last time. And I said I was sticking ahead because I hadn't even fought Crunch. It was later on in that same video. So yes. Hey Crunch. Bye Crunch. Feel free not to do anything. Alright. What's inside the Dubonet, sir? A section that I hated my first time through and I'm not looking for. I haven't recorded that part yet. I'm not looking forward to it. But that's for next time. So I will see you guys.